Okay, so we're gonna be using your watercolor paints. We're just gonna be using them straight out of the container. We're not gonna be mixing any colors or anything. Remember, this is for practice. All the techniques that I'm going to show you, I'm going to expect to see in the very first artwork that we're going to do. When you guys come in tomorrow for class, I will explain what the first artwork is, but I wanted to get you some practice in. You can certainly continue to practice after I'm done. This isn't gonna take the whole class period. So if I get a little ahead of you, it's not a big deal because you'll have time to, to finish up on your own, okay? So, might help if I had my own water. One of the paper towels is going to be used to do an actual technique. So you should have more than one. And the other paper towels, I always like to have them around to keep the paint brushes from getting too drippy if I'm doing a specific thing. Okay. I like to keep, and this is, you know, after years of experience, I like to keep my water and my paint on the same side of the artwork. The reason is, is I'm not gonna be reaching across the artwork to get at anything. Okay, so if I have a lot of water in my brush, I'm not gonna drip it all over my work. So keeping the paint and the water together is a better way to do this. And that's for all kinds of painting too. All right, first thing we're going to do is first of all, realize that this is not an artwork. We are not painting anything. We are learning about different techniques, okay? So there's no expectation that you're drawing a sky, a sun, put that on my desk, please. A sky, a sun, you're not doing that today. You're not doing that ever because we don't paint the sun in high school in the corner. We don't put green grass in every single painting that we do because we're not little kids anymore, okay? So if I get any of that, it's zero for a grade because I'm warning you now, I will not accept it. First thing we're going to do is create what they call a wash. In the corner of my paper, just by itself, and I'm not filling up the whole paper, I'm going to wash the paper with some water. That's it, that's all I'm starting with. Really soaking it. And the reason why we tape it down is so, because you're gonna see it's starting to buckle up. If you're taping things down at home, like on a kitchen table, okay, just watch at the end of this when I take my paper off this table to see what to do. I'm just gonna choose any color to do this. This is called a wash. And a wash is used a lot when we do make sky in an artwork, okay? Because the sky is relatively lighter than what's around it. So with a wash, you're just taking the color. Uh, mark record to the main office, please. Mark record. We're wrapping paper. Yeah, just any, yeah, just a small part. And then use any color? Yep. Turn the music down, please. Thanks, Sheldon. <laughs> All right, so washes are supposed to be very, very light. I know it's hard to see, very, very light. Once again, even though the water's already starting to get a little dirty, I'm just going to spread some water out in another area of my practice paper. Remember, this is not an artwork, it's practice. And then I'm just gonna choose again, random colors. And I'm just gonna put them on. I'm letting them do whatever they're going to do on their own. Move around, bleed, blend, anything they wanna do. So in the first wash, I controlled the spreading of the color. In the second one, I let them bleed together. Okay, and you can get some really cool effects when the colors just kind of do what they're gonna do all on their own with the water 
and the paper. Add a little darker to that. So that's called wash, and this is bleeding. I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush for the next one. You don't want your whole paper to be wet because that's kind of going to ruin some of the other things that we're going to do. I did not say to do that. I said do sections. So in this one, this is called wet on dry. The paper needs to be dry. So find a dry area and you're just going to paint as if you're just painting along like you're a little kid. And I'm just going to use the wet paint on the dry paper and it doesn't move around. Okay, it's not doing anything other than what I'm doing with my brush. So you can see every brush stroke that I made. It's not mixing together with the water because there isn't any. So that's wet on dry. It doesn't have to look like mine. It shouldn't look like mine. Okay, we're just practicing. Yes. So remember we talked about there was no white in watercolor yesterday. So if you want to lighten up a color, you just water it down. If you want to darken up a color, you could add black. Good observation, Miguel. That is A plus thinking. The next one is a little in two steps. Going to do wet on dry and I'm just going to paint a nice solid line. Nice and dark, and I'm using a dark color just so it can be seen easier. I'm painting a nice dark line, the paint is very thick, it's not watery, it's not watered down. And I'm washing my brush out, but I'm not gonna dry it out too much. I want a lot of water in the brush for this one. So it's relatively clean, but there's a lot of water in the brush. And I'm just going to kind of drag the paintbrush in an odd angle and let the paint bleed out of that line. And I'm going back and forth and I'm going to start moving down the paper. This is called pulling. I'm pulling the color out of that original line. If you remember when we used charcoal, Okay, it's like value, but with paint. And you pull it down and it gets lighter and lighter and lighter as it gets farther down the page. That's showing up pretty good on the screen up there. Okay, so, so far we have a wash, bleeding, wet on dry, and pulling. Okay, this is regular drawing paper. So when we do the actual artwork starting next week, okay, you're gonna see a significant difference about how the, the, the paint behaves on the good watercolor paper. It's a lot different.
Yeah, I like the colors in this. The paper is what I think the problem is with a lot of these techniques. It's just not good for painting with watercolor. It's good for tempera, not watercolor. Okay, the next one, I'm gonna take um, a bigger brush again, just because it's easier to see. You can use a small brush, it doesn't matter. And I'm drying, I cleaned it off, I dried it off, I really want the paintbrush to be dried out. I'm gonna take the paintbrush and I'm actually going to fan it out and spread all the bristles out like a fan. You can buy brushes like this, but why spend the money if you can just do it yourself? <laughs> okay, same, same thing. So they sell brushes like this, but with watercolor paint, because we use hair brushes, kind of have to do it yourself. This is probably camel. And I'm pretty sure they just brush the camels. They don't have to kill them or anything like that. Because they, they probably shed like any other outdoor animal does. And then camels are transportation still in a lot of places. So what I'm going to do is just dip the bristles, the tips, into any one of the paints that look wet. So in mine, my red is wet, my green is wet. I'm going to do green because it's the wettest. And I'm just putting the tips, I'm not putting the whole brush in, and then I'm going to use them to make what we could think was grass in this case, because it's green. So this is called dry brush, because you've really dried the brush out. And it's good if you're doing people, you could do hair, you can make fur with this technique grasses, tops of trees way off in the distance. I have an example of that in my own work. Okay, so dry brush is kind of like this feathery looking to it. It's kind of hard to see. So I will put this up close. We have dry brush up here. dry brush right here. Make sure to wash your brush out because it's hard to see that there's even paint on it after doing dry brush. So make sure you wash the brush out. And honestly, it's really not, I don't really mind because it's a school, but it's not really good to leave your paint brushes in the water. Um, I'm not going, I would never go crazy on a kid for that. I understand. But um, sometimes you do if we're using acrylic paint because it'll dry the, on the brush so quick. But it's not really good for the paint brushes to sit in the water. Yes, acrylic is very difficult to get out of paint brushes, especially the artist's acrylic. It smells so bad too. Ew. Okay, so that kind of ends our classic watercolor techniques. The ones that I'm going to do now are a little bit more experimental, um, a little bit more interesting, a little more fun. And I do use several of them in my own artwork. The first one I'm going to do involves needing a piece of plastic. So when you're ready for it, just go up and get it from the big roll that's on the table up front in the classroom. If you're at home, just regular plastic wrap that you have around the house. You don't need a very big piece. Of course, mine's all gunked up. Okay, so a piece of plastic wrap. And I'm going to just make a big area of black on my paper. Nothing special, just an area of black. That way everybody can see what I'm doing. Really darkening it up. Then I'm gonna take the plastic wrap and put it on there and I'm going to move it around. 
So you'll see a pattern, a texture formed underneath the plastic. I can't lift it up to show you because it's taped to the table. Let me get one from the other class. So you can see that the pigments are trapped underneath the plastic wrap and after it dries, it's gonna make a really cool pattern on the paper. So I would spend a little bit of space on this one. Okay, I would make the area that you're doing this technique in um, you know, a little bit bigger because it really does make a cool design. Again, if you're just messing around with the paint doing your own thing, when it comes time to do the project, you're not gonna know what to do. So you should try these and make sure that you understand what we're gonna be doing next. Okay, again, I'm gonna make another wash with a dark color. Going to use blue this time. Just another area of color. It's got a little black in it, I don't care. Trying to make it as dark as I can because I'm going to use salt on this one. Now I have a lot of artwork that uses the salt technique. It's my favorite unique technique to use. And one thing about it is that you have to use coarse sea salt. So it has to be chunky. So kosher salt will work if that's what your parents like to cook with or the sea salt, but it has to be the, the big chunky kind. The reason is, is that you physically take it, and if you wanna come up and get some, I'll put some in your hand. And you sprinkle it on the paint. And because of the nature of salt and water and the pigment, it starts separating and moving as it's drying. And it makes a really cool design. And I'll show you examples of those when I'm all done doing this. So again, this is my favorite technique. Unfortunately, the payoff will come tomorrow when they're dry because it's going to suck all the water up into it and then it's going to release the pigmentation back out onto the paper. It's really weird, really interesting look. I love your outfit. Thank you. If you have any extra that you don't want, just throw it in the garbage. Make sure your paper's wet with paint. Oops. So Wilma, you're gonna put it onto the wet paint, okay? That's why when we take these off the table, you have to be a little careful about the salt because it might just fall off all over the place. Hmm? No. Okay, I'm gonna make another wash and I use this technique every once in a while mainly when I feel like I've made a mistake. But again, I'm gonna use a dark, dark-ish color. Use purple this time. Just creating a, a space right through here with uh, wet on dry paper. You know, wash is used if you really want a lighter area that's way off in the distance or in the background. And it draw, it, you know, you have to wait till it dries before you can paint over it. This paper is still quite wet up here at the top. And remember, this is just the, the drawing paper. It's not the, the watercolor paper. OK, 
gonna take a paper towel and I'm gonna crunch it up. And if you have, you know, the regular white paper towels at home to do this with, it still, it will work fine, no problem. So what I'm doing is kind of breaking the surface of this to get kind of a weird texture. So I want, I want the texture from the um, paper towel to be kind of interesting when I do this. And I'm just going to kind of lift the color up. And you get some weird patterns with the paper towel. So that's called lifting. It's a big, you know, I can't see. Good enough? Yep. Sometimes paper towels at home have a pattern on it and you can just kind of like keep it flat and see if it'll make the pattern in the paint. Okay, that didn't work as well as it did in some of the other classes I've done this with. Okay, and last but not least, um, this is the most abstract technique that is used. A lot of students like to use it for various reasons, but using the straw to blow the paint around, you're not gonna get realism. It's really hard to make, to control what's going on with the straw. <laughs> so when you're blowing through it. So be prepared for random design. I'm gonna use black again so you can see it easier. And I'm going to put a big dot of black. Okay, and a couple little splashes of black around it. And I'm just going to And take it easy because you might get dizzy. Okay, kind of cool. That's the best one I've done out of the three classes. And that's just straw blowing. Okay, take it easy on blowing because these are real small, so you have to blow pretty hard. And if you haven't eaten breakfast, you might get a little lightheaded, so be careful. <laughs> Good thing I'm sitting down. Oh, my paper towel, uh, my plastic wrap came off. It came out pretty cool. It's hard to see on the video, but it is really interesting. I blew it off with my straw. Okay, so these are the techniques that we're going to be using in our next artwork. Um, let them sit on your tables. If you have any extra space on your paper, you can continue to, you know, try out, do something better experiment a little bit more. The salt is up here if you haven't gotten it to it yet. Um, just remember that uh, we're gonna be saving these for reference for our next artwork. So we are gonna take them off the table very carefully in a few minutes. All right, so 